Gary Vaynerchuk is the chairman of VaynerX, a modern day media and communications holding company, and an active CEO of Vander Media, a full service advertising agency servicing Fortune 100 clients across the companies or locations. Gary is a highly sought after public speaker. He's a five time New York Times best selling author, as well as a prolific angel investor. You know, I wish I got in on these deals because he has invested in <laughs> Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, Vimo, and Uber. And you know, he is. I would say out of all the people in the world, in the space of social media, he has impacted my life the most. From his hard work ethic, his authenticity, and his desire to serve like no other. Can we welcome to the stage the future owner of the New York Ducks? Investors, VCs, 
and the economy has been frothy and fluffy as hell for a decade, and most people just don't even know how to navigate through troubled waters or be wartime generals. All that leads to the biggest point that I wanna make in here, which is the following. Unless you are a contemporary communicator, you are stunningly boring. And what I mean by that is, we're living during a time right now where <laughs> so much is available to us in what we're trying to achieve, we just have to be practitioners of the craft. The amount of people here who refuse to produce content every single day on platforms when it is the easiest way, the easy, and I don't like using words like easy or stupid. There's a lot of words I don't love. I hate, I really dislike the word easy, but the easiest way for every human sitting in this room to achieve whatever they're up to within an organization, building a business, things they wanna to share to the world, the easiest way is to produce content daily for seven to 12 websites or apps or platforms. And, and I find it remarkable and I find myself going into categories of content that I absolutely do not see myself going into, parenting and insecurities. And a lot, I find myself navigating into places that I feel passionate to speak about because it's been so difficult for me to understand why so few are actually executing. People are spending more time dwelling or complaining about perceived lack of opportunities or the control that others have without realizing the internet has all the leverage and so much of what you want to achieve can be done direct to consumer. You do not need to be at the mercy of so much infrastructure, companies, politics, businesses, press, all of it has been completely put to the side in your ability to achieve what you want direct to consumer at scale. And when I say direct to consumer, for the ones that raise their hand and have a business, that means your clients that you want to get. And for the employees, by putting out content and thoughts that may lead to being recruited to go somewhere where you will be valued. We are, we are stunningly in control because of the scale of the internet right now while shockingly confused by how much control we have. And, I, and I've spent a lot of time thinking about this. So in its most basic form, if you're trying to get B2B clients, and one more time, hands up, just B2B, you're trying to, you must produce 10 pieces of content a day on LinkedIn. I'm gonna say, we're gonna go through a nice and slow. That's the beauty wow. of the small audience. <laughs> you have to figure out, A, how to communicate best as an organization or as a single human. Are you good at writing? Are you good at in front of the camera? Many don't want to be in front of the camera because subconsciously they don't like the way they look and it makes them feel bad, and that's fine. There's so many other variables that go into that. We can only tackle so many things at once. But that's, you know, I, I get so stressed when I see people use me as an example of why you must make video. The example of me being somebody that proves that you should sign up for their video course or you must make video is not because video was good for me, it's because that I was self-aware that I'm better at video than I am at writing. Writing is dominant. Taking your phone and making a memo about a thought or an idea or a value prop, recording it and then posting it in audio form is a remarkable way to communicate. That's why Anchor did well, and that's why Spotify bought Anchor. Like, writing four paragraphs on LinkedIn is a, an incredible idea. Making a video on the run with your iPhone is a good idea. We spend an enormous amount of time making excuses to why we don't produce content. My favorite, I don't have time. Uh, people think it's a, an equipment game. You don't have the right video production equipment, audio production lighting, just the sheer and stunning amount of excuses that we are putting out into the world to not actually produce, to then use that as the lead gen to what we would want to happen is, uh, is something I'm very passionate about addressing step by step by step of what are the insecurities that we are, uh, we are sitting with that stop us from doing it. LinkedIn's organic reach if you have no followers, LinkedIn's organic reach right now is acting like Facebook did in 2011 and 12. 
You can have no audience. It could be the first time you post. You have to bring value. And this is very important. One of the great reasons I have the incredible luxury of sitting here tonight at, in this seat is because I have focused forever on bringing value because the end consumer is the only thing that matters. So you could make a video of like, you should hire my company, but that is a commercial for you. Or you could put out a piece of content that says seven things people need to think about before they throw an event. You could. And so when you put out that seven things people should think about that they don't normally think about before throwing an event, because you actually have expertise and you know what I would not think of that you do know. When you put that on a LinkedIn form, in a video, in written form, in audio, with no audience and nobody paying attention or knowing who you are, you could literally create a LinkedIn account, make that your organic post, and you will have hundreds, if not thousands of people seeing it. That is not possible on Instagram. It's too saturated now, and when you post, you get three people see it. Facebook's organic reach is gone as well. How many people here are aware of the phenomenon of what Facebook pages was for the last six or seven years, and people that jumped six or seven years ago organically got the benefit of becoming an influencer or building a business? Raise your hands. Good. Everyone's hand should have went up, but let me, since they did it, I'm just gonna assume you're not lazy and I'll give you the answer. Much like email open rates in 1997, which anybody who started an email service dominated because it was new and everybody read all their emails. <laughs> Much like Google AdWords, when it came out in 2000, 2001, I think, when I was doing it, everyone was five cents a click. Nobody had built up everything. And that was the golden era. Much like going on Twitter first and amassing a million followers because everybody followed everybody, that was the rule. Much like being early on Instagram or anything else, much like real estate, if you're right and you land grab, it works out. On Facebook, it was one of the biggest phenomenons. I would say email, I would say Google search, and then I would say Facebook. People that built Facebook pages in 2011, 12, 13, 14, 15, when they amassed big followers, when they posted, the majority of people that followed that page saw it, and people crushed. Then over time, people realized Facebook was real, companies started spending money, and the ads took over a percentage of the feed, and all of a sudden, people who had a million followers on their page would have 40,000 people see it, whereas only two years earlier, they had 300,000 followers, and they had 200,000 people see it. Organic reach, not paying for ads. Right now, on LinkedIn, the organic reach is wildly good. You don't have to spend a dollar. You just have to spend the effort to be educated on how, and then you have to actually do. TikTok. <laughs> the same phenomenon is happening on TikTok. I have empathy why a lot of people will say, well, that is not where my audience is, but that would be because people are playing checkers and they're not playing chess, and they don't realize that the number one influencer on buying things in America is the mom, and the person that influences the mom the most is the daughter. You can have an entire strategy on targeting 14 year old girls on TikTok to make a business transaction happen with the mom. You could. A, you have to have the strategy and the knowledge to know what I just said is true. Mm -hmm. Two, you then have to put out content that inspires a 14 year old to tell their mom about it, which is no easy task. <laughs> That's a creative struggle. You have to be very clever, but it's not impossible. But the amount of organic reach on that platform, and for whatever reason, if your side hustle or your actually job creates a world where you're trying to market to 12 to 18 year olds, you should be spending 50 to 70% of your time on TikTok. The growth is uncomfortable. And it is the only platform right now in the world that has the potential to dethrone Instagram as the top app in culture. It may not have age up, the way that Vine and you know Social Cam and others did not, but it might. Because I will remind all of you that Instagram started off as a app to help people take better photos mm -hmm. and have filters, where Facebook was a college-only social network. These things age up. So this is what I spent all my time on. Underpriced attention. What is overpriced attention? 
what is underpriced attention. There's a lot of people in this room who do marketing behaviors that work for them. I get un unbelievable amounts of emails and phone calls and conversations and interactions and DMs from people that say, Gary, you talk about Facebook ads as a better thing for a local business, but I'm doing really fine, well, with my direct mail. And I'm like, okay. I'm like, you know, they're like, you're wrong. I'm crushing with direct mail. I'm like, I'm like, okay. I'm like, what do you spend in direct mail? Eight thousand dollars on these campaigns. I'm like, cool. Have you ever spent eight thousand dollars on a well-crafted, multi-different pieces of content in a three-mile radius Facebook ad campaign? And the answer is no. I would find it very hard in this room to believe that a perfectly executed campaign in digital would lose to something that was printed on a tree. <laughs> you may believe it, and I have empathy for that, but I have yet to see the true A-B test where it's done well on both fronts, not because direct mail or print or radio or television doesn't work, it's because you can only make one piece of creative. And to get somebody to do something, you have to be relevant to that. When I want to make something happen, I have the ability to cast 14 different demographics in that photo if I choose. When I look around this room, we look different. We resonate to different things. I find it hard to believe that you think you're gonna convince a 28-year-old white male decision maker in a corporate office in Midtown is gonna react the same way I'm compelled to do something than a 63-year-old Latino woman making that decision in a company in Cincinnati. We need relevance. We need content at scale around a lot of things. We have the opportunity to actually do that now. But the sheer lack of education on what's available to us on these platforms is staggering. I've become stunningly silent around almost everything in the world because I've realized I must be really, really undereducated on everything because the conversations people have with me around marketing are laughable. There are people sitting in this room right now that have real conviction around their belief on what and how these things work, but have never run an ad on it. <laughs> You've literally decided if LinkedIn or Facebook or Instagram or Twitter or YouTube or podcast advertising can or cannot work for your business, yet you have never fucking run an ad on it. <laughs> I'm fascinated by that. <laughs> it also made me realize that's probably my points of view on healthcare and many other issues, and so I need to shut up. And so I be quiet about things I don't know. So, a couple things that I'd like to talk about. I believe that everybody here who feels what I'm about to say is a possibility should then do. If you believe that you can start a podcast in your sector, so you gotta level up, it can't be about your business, it needs to be about your sector. I didn't start a wine show about wine library, I started a wine show. If you believe you can start a podcast in your sector, and you know it's true what I'm about to tell you, which is there are no costs associated with the podcast. It is literally hit the record button on your iPhone or Samsung, whatever you have, and talk. Um, you should. The growth of audio consumption is remarkable and will continue to go because we love to do many things and we love the passive nature of that consumption. How many people here now listen to a podcast at some level of regular basis? Raise your hands. Raise them high, I want everybody to see this. Raise them high if you are. I want everybody to look around, get a little bit of a look. Put your hands down. How many of those people were not, were not listening to podcasts four years ago? Raise your hand. Raise them high. This is my job. My job, what I do, is basically on an everyday basis, I day trade what humans are doing in consumption, and then I decide how to be good at filling it with something valuable. The reason most people aren't successful on Facebook and LinkedIn and Instagram and podcast is because they're making selfish content, not selfless content. You're putting out what you want to sell to somebody for you, not making something that brings value to somebody else. There is very to no little romance in marketing. Everybody's going in for the close. It's not marketing, it's actually sales. 
which is why it doesn't work. And so one of the challenges everybody here has to think about as they think about a strategy if they're gonna buy into what I'm saying here tonight, which is if you're not producing content on a daily basis and putting it out on one to eight of these platforms a day, the relevance and the leverage that you're looking for is dwindling by the second, because somebody else is. If you believe that to be true, you must challenge yourself on two very basic things that I've been talking about. One, how do you communicate? Video, written, audio. Two, you have to provide value. This, I wrote a book several years ago called Jab, 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 Right Hook. And the premise was give, 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 and then ask. And it was because I was noticing everybody was posting on Facebook and, and Twitter at the time, just everything was for them. Everything was for them. And it was bringing no value and people were not building community. And then ironically, it really helped a lot of people who were actually hippy dippy in the other direction. There's a lot of people out there who do actually put out value quite a bit who really struggle with asking for something in return. And then they complain about being taken advantage of. And then I just ask one basic question is, have you asked for the business? No. And so it was a great framework. It brought a lot of value to a lot of people, which made me feel great. And it continues to be a very, I mean, this stuff is so basic. Like, if I'm, like, I'm sitting and listening to myself talk right now, like, this is so basic. <laughs> Yet nobody's doing it. And what isn't basic is two things. Having the ability to understand the culture of who you're targeting and what they give a shit about, right? Layering what's current is very difficult. Understanding the slang terminology, the trigger points, the temperature is, is a difficult challenge. And then also understanding the nuances of the platforms. I think one of the things, how many people here consume my content? Can I just show hands just for my context? A, thank you. And B, I think a lot of you just raise your hands. You know I scream about this constantly. Watch what I'm doing, not what I'm saying. I'm not, I'm not making content on Instagram right now that are popping or memes with my head on it for my health. I'm doing it because I know there's something that's working. I'm not making cartoons on LinkedIn, comic strips, because I think it's funny. I'm doing it because there's something there. If you see me do something thematically the same on a platform a third or fourth time, it means I already know it works. <laughs> Understand? Like yeah. that, like that's I'm really trying to think about like as I continue to evolve, like that was the detailed version of watching what I'm doing, not what I'm saying. I'll do a lot of stuff once. I posted I posted a couple weeks ago an Instagram video upside down. Like, I, I posted something with a black screen. I'm like trying so many things, because I don't fear. One of the things that blows me away is people are posting the same stuff over and over, because they want to hit some subjective requirement of how many likes they get that they're accustomed to, that there's, that's the waterline for themselves. They're so scared to do something new, because if it doesn't get as many likes as my other stuff, I'll be sad. <laughs> Some fucking high school shit. <laughs> and it goes way deeper. I have crazy conversations with people that show way too much skin, sit, talk about things they don't actually believe in, are actually sad because they're just completely that insecure around a vanity metric. It's why I'm pushing for and advocating and cheering for the fact that Instagram's thinking about hiding likes. And as somebody who has plenty of followers, if every one of these platforms eliminated showing people how many followers people had, I'd be more than happy about that too. But those little tactical things don't solve the truth. People love to blame social media. There is no social media. There's only us. Twitter didn't make you type that dumb shit. <laughs> We're living through the greatest era of judgment and complete lack of accountability. Parents are on full tilt, angry at social media and technology, but not acknowledging that they're treating their children like products, not like people. We have a lot going on, and we all know it, in a very big way. However, ironically, those are the same trigger points that allow so much fruitfulness that you're looking for. You just need to use these tools for your advantage. 
not for your disadvantage. This goes back down to who you are. Are you patient enough to provide value to enough people to reap the benefits in the long term? Or are you looking for it now? The utter lack of patience is remarkable and leads to incredibly bad behavior, which leads to behavior that brings little to no value, and now you're competing with the world. What people are struggling with is understanding you're competing with the world. We're competing against everybody, every day. And every day more competition, not less. The cost of entry to be in business is a goose egg. It's so easy. There's no upfront cost, it's not buying a storefront. Your capital is not your advantage, it's why big companies are in trouble. Your content, your context, and most of all my friends, I promise you, your intent is your advantage. There's nothing wrong with building something for yourself. I just want to remind you that whoever brings the most value to the end consumer wins. There's a very specific reason that Netflix and Amazon are having a good run. We like what they're doing for us. You can come up with a lot of other things. It's awfully convenient to have free shipping and they are the next day at the best price. <laughs> you like that. You may have a social point of view on what they pay and this and that, guess what? Do you know that? Do you know the amount of people that unsubscribe things for a week to make a point because they're a keyboard warrior on social and then resubscribe to it a week later? So, punchline being this, if I leave with anything here, and I know we're going to some Q&A, but I think we're going here, but maybe I'll sneak some in the crowd because I'm broke like that. But if I leave with anything, I, I have to leave you with this. I'm telling you, and I'm telling you with all my heart, if you do not produce content for Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, YouTube, a podcast, if you are not producing content on those platforms, I'm telling you you're in big trouble. You may not feel it today, because you have a good reputation, or you've got a historic book, but you were vulnerable. You were absolutely vulnerable. And I don't understand how you don't spend 25 hours on Google searching things you don't know. Inevitably, after a talk like this, or a talk meeting like this, someone's like, Carrie, I don't know what to do. I'm like, you didn't know how to drive. You figured it out. You didn't know how to parent. You didn't know how to kiss. You didn't know how to do anything. Mm -hmm. And there's an incredible website. It's called Google. <laughs> <laughs> how do I post on LinkedIn? Enter. <laughs> How do I make a podcast? Enter. We are, we are using so many excuses because what's really happening in our culture more than anything is people are talking big game, but their actions don't map to their ambitions. You must put in the 50 to 100 hours to become educated on how to become a content provider for the websites and apps that control our society's attention. You may not like that people are on their phone all day. People didn't like Elvis or Tupac. <laughs> you don't get to judge what society's doing. You need to really look deeper. Kids are more social than ever. Kids are more social than ever. You, you think that they don't go out and play, but they talk to way many more people on Twitch than you ever talk to. Let me remind everybody here over 40, when we all went outside and played, if your friend happened to be punished or at his dance, you were fucked. <laughs> yeah. You were social with your basketball by yourself. <laughs> we are, we are basic. My friends, we as a society, as a business community, as individuals, are very basic right now with our conversation. We must ladder up to what's happening. You must take advantage of the opportunity because if you don't, somebody else is going to and that is going to double impact your reality. So, you don't like the term personal brand? Good news, call it reputation. That's how I see it, right? We are in semantics. People are judging the term personal. Yeah, personal brand's douchey. What about reputation? Oh, that's the most important thing. It's the same shit, guys. <laughs> We're in a semantics business right now, and we must get out of it. And the way to get out of it is by doing. What the internet is doing is it's suffocating everything in the middle besides the communication and the product or service you're providing. What it's doing is suffocating everything in the middle 
besides the idea and making the idea. Figure out how to put yourself in a position to make on these places and you will have far more success than you can imagine. It's just gonna take time and it is completely predicated on the value you're able to provide. I just basically gave a 40 minute talk on the following thing. Hey guys, it's a really good idea to be good at basketball. I really think that you should become a professional NBA player. The part that matters though is the practice and the execution of the talent. The ROI of the basketball for LeBron James is going to be billions and billions and billions of dollars. For me, we're into the negatives because I've had three or four surgeries. And so, what's really exciting for me to leave with is this. Make, but be self-aware. Self-awareness is absolutely one of the most important things we must talk about in our society because it is the quickest path to happiness. Once you accept what you're good at and not good at, things can get far more interesting. I'm not sitting up here saying you can do it. I'm saying you need to figure out how you best communicate and then put in a ton of work and then eventually reap the benefits if you're capable of putting out things that actually bring value to the people that you're trying to do things with. One of the great ways to figure out what to put out is to listen. I seem like I'm always talking because of the nature of the framework of the content that I put out at scale across all these platforms. But 90% of my behavior is listening. The entire way up here, I'm reading comments and emails. I'm paying attention to what people talk about and are interested in. That's how I get to hypotheses or investing in things early. It's because I'm listening. Mm. Empathy. Empathy is the foundational skill set that we must absolutely challenge ourselves to try to develop more of. It leads to a lot of good, and I highly